judges, fellow FFA members, and guests. My name is Carly Weldon, and I am presenting my speech, The Right to Farm, A Farmer's Perspective, on behalf of the Jonesville FFA chapter. Timekeeper, I'm ready to begin. The Right to Farm Act is not only a nationwide movement, but a nationwide crisis. Growing up on an approximately 3,000 acre crop farm, I did not learn about the right to farm as early on as most livestock farmers might. Livestock farmers received neighborhood complaints about pungent odor, water contamination, and animal rights versus crop farmers who may slide by with little to no complaints at all. However, I clearly remember the day I learned about the right to farm two summers ago. My family was on our way to our cottage on Lake Michigan when my dad got an angry call from our neighbor complaining that his pond was drained and that his fish were in danger of suffocating due to a lack of water. To give some context, our family farm has set up an irrigation system that gets fed by an aquifer beneath our field that has a natural outlet which feeds our neighbor's ponds. Our neighbor immediately started yelling at my father, telling him it was our family's fault that his ponds were drained and that his fish weren't receiving the water they needed to be kept alive. While this was true due to the long runtime of our irrigation that day, we were legally okay to tap the aquifer and catch the natural drainage because our well was below bedrock and had been approved by the Michigan Department of Environmental Great Lakes and Energy, or EGLE. My brother and I were in the back seat of the truck while this call was taking place. And although we didn't, and although my dad didn't have the speaker on, we could hear the whole conversation. From the back seat, we could hear the man yelling and berating my father saying this just never should have happened because he had the rights to that water source. My dad said that he was sorry it had happened and tried to explain to him simply that we did have the rights to the water because we were farmers. My dad stated that we were going away for the next week and they would have to discuss the matter in person later, but to solve the problem immediately, he would send someone over to shut off the irrigation. After that, my neighbor told my father they would indeed be talking about the matter when we got home because he was still very upset. As we know, crop farmers are required to keep a consistent yield and crops growing throughout the years in order to be profitable. That requirement was first acknowledged in 1862 when the United States government formed the office now known as the Department of Agriculture. At that time, cotton farmers needed a platform more than ever as it was coming at the tail end of the Civil War. These farmers with and without slavery needed a place to be heard and have it needed a place to be heard and have a place to discuss recovery plans for farm life with and without slavery in the south the right to farm act itself is a reiteration of what the department of agriculture was trying to do in 1862 and explain and highlights the farmers rights to keep their daily routines in terms of how their farms are managed and controlled without the nagging of new people to their rural community it also makes it so that crop farmers can sell their goods on a truly free and open market and use water sources to irrigate, like the aquifer near our home. In today's era, these rights are being challenged on an almost daily basis. Typically, a livestock farmer will get hit harder with the rate phone calls. They receive complaints almost daily regarding manure smells and potential lagoon contamination lagoons may cause the drinking water. Many non-farmers find the smells of animals grown commercially to be unpleasant or disturbing, so they are quick to judge and criticize the farmer. In reality, the farmer is often trying, just trying to make his living peacefully and help feed the community. When people challenge the smells they don't like and attempt to stop the operations on a farm from happening, they affect the rest of the community and the farm and market world surrounding it. Legally, the right to farm allows farmers to have some strength in court cases and not have to weakly defend themselves. Juries don't often have the knowledge of farm operations needed to rule fairly. Now, farmers backed with lawyers specializing in agricultural law and farm bureau have a better chance in the courtroom than ever before. The most dangerous time for a farmer is in many ways the summer. Although the summer doesn't seem all that dangerous, considering there's no major planting or harvesting, Farmers are forced to deal with summer storms, irrigation failures or malfunctions, and in the case of a livestock farmer, almost daily complaints of heat making the manure produced on their farm smell worse. This delicate time for any farmer is made worse when a call with complaints or threats of lawsuits is made 
regarding the assumptions people have about their rights and the rights of farmers. The role of a farmer will always be to feed the community. Today's society, now dominated by social media, corporate offices, and online shopping, undermines the impact a farmer can have on their community. Only 1.3% of the U.S. population is farmers. That 1.3% produces the majority of meat, vegetables, fruit, and grain consumed in the United States. When one person complains, creates a problem, or accuses a farmer and takes them to court, their actions jeopardize the food chain. The right to farm law was passed in New Jersey in 1979, and by 2015, all 50 states had passed that law, including Michigan in 1981, which enables a farmer to do so much more. In conclusion, the Right to Farm Act provides a foundation to allow our nation to produce the necessary food, feed, and fuel required for our nation to survive. At this point in time, the Right to Farm Act is continuously working to improve relations throughout the rural community, heighten farm awareness in everyone's lives, promote communication, and protect the farmer with state laws. Our family has focused on our neighborly relations by shortening our irrigation run times and openly communicating with our neighbor about scheduled runs that may consume more water resources. And that communicating in and of itself is the heart and soul of the Right to Farm Act. Timekeeper, this concludes my presentation. Judges, you have a copy of my references and I now open the floor for questions. Have you done any research on a lawsuit that has taken place against a farmer where the farmer wasn't backed up by the Right to Farm Act? Um, sometimes if they're water, um, I'm going to use a crop farmer example, sure. um, it was regarding a water or a wetland water conservation and they were actually not under the guidelines of a certain thing. So in that case, the farmer did think that they were in the right and they typically would have had the right to farm with backing them, but because they weren't following one of the codes of this generally followed state law about wetlands and natural conservation, they weren't backed by the right to farm law. What made you choose, um, it seems you speak a lot about the law and the language of the law, um, what made you specifically hone in that piece of it? Um, well, I think that it's really important that farmers have backing in the community because over 98% of cases regarding farmers rights are dealt underneath the table and not necessarily at the um, level of a courtroom. Only 250 cases were reported regarding the rights of farmers in Michigan in a, the past year. And I think that the more people know about farmers having those rights at a state level and especially at a basic national level, it can help farmers not feel so they might actually be the one to take their neighbor to court because they're just receiving such harsh um, accusations as opposed to the neighbor taking the farmer to court. Thank you. You mentioned all of these issues that we have with like our community and like manure and smell and just the inconvenience that it poses. Do you think that this is like widening the gap between the farmer and the consumer? And if so, how do we help combat that and, you know, get that consumer in and see what we're doing and kind of get them to that level of understanding so they're at a common ground? So a common place that you could, that any person could find more about the right to farm and the rights of farmers would be on the Farm Bureau insurance page. And there are several other resources that show the rights of farmers and it shows the process from this is manure is almost essential to the growth of plants and it's just a natural thing that everyone should have to deal with not just people who don't like it so i know driving by personally as a farmer i am not a fan of the smell of manure but i would never go because i know the behind the scenes of it that it goes towards raising those crops which goes towards raising the food that everyone else eats 
And so the more, I feel like the more people know about that in the process, the better it will be for everyone else. And that would close the gap between consumer and farmer. In your personal case or your family had to deal with this, was there ever a common ground that you and Manuka were able to come to? Um, we have a leveling system now at that um, natural spring that if a water level goes below something or a certain level, then we'll shut off our irrigations or at least try not to use more water resources. And like I said in my conclusion, we will talk to him about if there was a dry year that we might have to use more water resources in order for us to be benefit instead of his ponds that he has for fun per se. Do you think there's any section of the policy that is lacking that might not be covered in the farm? Like in that policy, do you think there's anything that's hurting the farmer? So there definitely is different variations. Each state has their own variation of the right to farm law. And then on a national scale, the Department of Agriculture has their basics that all state constitutions have in those laws. And with that, in that basic constitutional law, it shows that farmers have a certain extent to which they, they need to have their wells approved. They need to be able to have, we need to be able to put manure on our fields and be able to have permission to do that. It is a piece of respect that you should have for your neighbors that they might not like this.